What's up, man? Dr. Reed. Mm-hmm. How are you? I'm good. You got an echo. Oh, well, that's because I'm on live. I am reporting on this situation with you and F- Flop Chiquet and her mm-hmm. bandits. And I would love... Wait a minute, you call what? How you, what you say? <laughs> you call it what? Flop Chiquet. F H A, Flopsha, okay, and her bandits of held hounds, and I would love for you to, if you had the time, if you had the energy, if you had the wherewithal to come on and speak to the phone call that she had with you, etc., and to maybe even okay, give. Send me the link. Send me the link. Okay, I'm about to send it to your inbox right now. Okay. All right. Can you see me, Doctor Reed? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, there you go. Hi, Dr. Reed. <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't, I'm in my house. It don't matter. All right, go ahead. What's up? You like your dapper self. What's going on? So, obviously, there is a lot going on. I'm happy that you were able to take my call um, because, obviously, people are always eager to hear from you, especially when it comes to certain levels of controversy. One of the first things I want to ask you about is Flop Chiquet, your old acquaintance, called you the other night. A lot of people were curious as to, like, why you took the call, etc. Um, I told them that she called you from a number that you didn't recognize, for one. And what are your thoughts about the nature of that call? Well, I mean, I didn't recognize the number, but then when I looked at it, twice i saw it said latasha something and i said i think that's tasha real name and i said but she ain't calling me so I, I picked it up i said hello and then y'all heard how the um how the phone call went even well, you stopped that, when you realized that it was her i i'm not gonna say shocked but i was curious mm-hmm. um and especially since why, you know like what she's been up to since y'all ended, that she well, you know, well, see, I did not know anything had been said. You know, because when all of that stuff popped off with Lamore, then I, um, Whitehead, when everything had popped off with him, I know she, they were together on each other platform, mm-hmm. but I hadn't, I hadn't heard nobody. Nobody came and told me anything else. So in my mind, it was over. So I, I think there was a part of me that was thinking. Oh, okay, she she already she had apologized for other stuff before, so that's this what this is going to be. And if you listen to the conversation, that's what it sounded like. She said, "Been on, we said stuff online, da 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 da." So I'm thinking, oh, okay, things are going to get back at least okay, you know, to where we're not online dragging each other. So that's what I was thinking was happening. So you thought things actually had kind of smoothed over, that she went her mm-hmm. way, you going your way? Because you definitely, after y'all kind of officially called it quits, literally went on your way. You never came back to slander her or to spill her tea or to put her business out there. You literally just mm-hmm. went on about your rich-ass life. Uh, well, you know, I'm never going to do nothing like that. Um, because... and. She, Shout out to everybody who likes to do beef. I know you cover the beef, but you don't typically beef with people. Right. Um, beef, but, I don't beef with these hoes. Right. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I I can't do it because it's too expensive for me to do at this point in my life. So I have to keep my YouTube and my Facebook. I can be a little bit more whatever on IG, um, but it's getting to the point where I can't over there either. But I can't be involved in beefing. I mean, no matter how bad I want to. <laughs> I be wanting to get some folk back on my mouth to slick. Mm-hmm. You know, but no, I can't be involved with that. So I did thought that it had like sort of breezed over and it was and this was a sort of like a black like, by bygones, be bygones type of conversation. I'm sure that you have to be confused about 
the level that she's willing to go to considering that you never did anything to her to start with that you did not do anything to her and that the situation that even led to the breakdown of your relationship involved you just simply having to correct her about misinformation she stated publicly and you did that rather respectfully and she even apologized to you for that misinformation so I can only imagine how confused you are seeing that this woman now has committed to really being an open enemy and to just go into devastating low vibrational plate levels to to smear you. Am I frozen? Look like I'm no, frozen. No, you're not okay. frozen. Okay. Yeah. I I still don't understand it. Mm. What you're calling the beginning, what could have been the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that was it. I mean, cause that ain't enough for me, but maybe it's enough for her, but I, I don't know. I don't understand it. And but you do know why I say it's the beginning, right? Is, um, it is you do know why I state that that was, yeah. The yeah. You said, nar why? said nar narcissistic injury, I think, but it was right. also things that happened almost immediately after Oh, that's right. Right? I don't know if you want to get into that, but... Oh, yeah, with the other YouTuber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Freeway call and everything that happened that morning, except... It may have so you been. won't be a part of my damn beauty sleep because of that drama. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, I, I couldn't... I, you know, I don't... This is the thing. What I realized over the last few months of my life is that I, I probably need to just make sure, because I'm carrying a lot. I have a lot of responsibility. I have thousands of people that need me to do what I do, whether that's on Larry Reed Live, you know, entertaining, making people laugh and talking about what is happening, or in Patreon where there are other thousands that are in there who look to me for education, empowerment, you know, and, and spirit, spiritual education. I do that twice a week over there, or sometimes three. So I, I'm i carrying a lot. And then all of these contractors that have to be um, paid every month for their service and helping me do what I do. I have to be focused on those things and my daughters. And it's a lot. So I, I, don't, I don't really give everything as much thought as... I probably would if I was in a different place. I'm not just a, a commentator or a YouTuber. It's it's so many hats that I'm wearing. So I just, I can't move like that. I just can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, so I haven't looked into it and really discovered what's this, what's that, why this, why that. I am a little bit by a little bit having these moments, typically in the morning, after prayer, meditation, and listening to a couple of um, things, I have a thought that I pass. I write down whatever I think at the moment, and then I'll, uh, I'll let it go, and I keep letting it go. So you think everything has died down. You go on. You kind of detach from the crazy man. Nobody's bringing you nothing, and then boom, there's... The Accuser, there's Bishop Bicklip, there's Flop Shakay, and then there comes this phone call. What's going through your mind through this 11-minute, 13-minute phone call with her? I was realizing, if you listen to it, I was, I was, first of all, I was walking. I was doing my walk, still doing 10 to 20 minutes. I heard the, the, <laughs> the anti-diabetes. I heard you block <laughs> diabetes. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm, I ain't got, I'm the only, I think I'm the only one of my siblings that don't have diabetes. Hey, man, say um, paper, paper, paper Bible yeah. saved. Right. Both of my parents have and plenty of my aunts on both sides, heart trouble. You know, I don't have mm. any of those mm -hmm. things except um, uh, the occasional stress. Yeah, and, and muscle spasms. I have, which I heard she said that came from HIV. You know, I and this really, this is why I can't put my mind around it. Cause when I start thinking, just then my head tightened because I'm like, I, I met her in 2019, so we've had several conversations, and she knows why I have back spasms. 
Everybody around me knows why I have spat back spasms. People who follow my platform mm -hmm. knows why. Because I'm always running my mouth and telling all my business. So it's and no secret. And done who you couldn't, you know, completely stroke the middle right because of those back spasms know why you have those. Okay. Now, she ain't going to say that. I'm gonna go we just talked about that the other day. <laughs> no. No. I, I, I gave her some of the best loving in her life. Clearly. You know, so... So, yeah, yeah. she's not going to say that. Mm -hmm. So, um, since we were teenagers. So, they, um, I, I can't, because she know. I mean, she knows my life. She know how I live. She knows what I don't do. She knows how I think about, unless she won't pay attention to me. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't, I mean, she, I don't have, that's why I don't, think on it because I'm I pull a blank I don't understand it so just as shocked as everybody else is like when she went from praising me you know and that one time I went to her house the one time her basement mm -hmm. yeah I went to her house for the interview and the one time she came to my house for the interview of course her husband been here more than more than once but um I she know me enough to know that that stuff she's saying that even when it comes down to all of these court cases, we have been dealing with each other since 2019 and sharing a lawyer. She knows everything and was actually, she is actually one of the one who made me sue as many people as I have recently so, so, mm -hmm. so, I have sued over the last two years. That was her. She said, you can't let this go. You can't let people have that kind a rumor out there about you. She said, you have to do something. And I didn't do it until recently, but she was telling me this the whole like a year. Thing. Yeah, the whole, yeah, so, and just weird. I remember seeing her over in the chats of certain people, you know, defending you. Yeah. And so for her to now act like this is new to her and act like, oh my God, when she's been aware of all of this, just like we all have been aware of all of this. And she's been encouraging you to pursue litigations toward these people. And now she's hijacked those allegations and weaponized them against you. Which lets me know that there's, I, there's something that I did without knowing or said that triggered her because i'm not a celebrity not the level of celebrity she, she normally talk about over celebrity than she is well what i'm saying is most of the people that she talk about is celebrity her thing is celebrity gossip you, you know, know so you, I, you are being on netflix and hbo and the stella awards and being on the billboards and having yeah, I, work and but i'm not as big yeah every damn thing else you connected to yeah, but I'm not as big as a Cardi B or um, these up uh, um, Derek. That's my own line. I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, I don't view myself as that. So for me, it looks, and that may be an issue that I have, but I don't view myself like that. So I'm like, why am I even important enough for you to talk to me? So this has to be personal. Mm -hmm. If anything, she's she's giving me clout. Oh. I mean, because I mean, because I'm like. Just spell my name right. I see, that I, mean, I, I see that subscriber count on YouTube over there going up, and on IG, and on, you know, IG. And, and, so, and on Twitter. You mm -hmm. know, so it's so it's like you spell my name right, but I still don't understand. I I I do know the girl that works for her, according to Tasha, never liked me from the beginning and was always the one that was. When I would see post online shady concerning me, I would call her. She and she would say, "It's her, it's not me," you know. So don't worry, about her. she takes dick between the washer and the dryer. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh my God! You know. So I'm thinking. I don't know. I know me. And her husband got along good. You know. So it can't. It was. What do you think middle. her husband thinks of? the situation between you and her. Well, so let's put a pause in there right there. Do you think, does it make sense to you that any husband would allow their wife to get into this, this much smoke 
I mean, clearly she's opening herself up to another litigation, another lawsuit. He also knew you and spent more time with you than she did. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's, I mean, that there should be more expectation on him to talk good sense? I mean, that that's who he fucking. That is the mother of his children. That is his breadwinner, his workhorse. So I don't mean that disrespectfully. Um, it's just so I don't blame her. I mean, just like Wendy Williams' husband all them years. You know, she was always in something and, and talking sideways. He protected her. So I know it. that's what husbands do, especially he's African. And, um, yes, yeah, so I, I, I understand him. And I want to put a pause there, Alaric, because uh, Coco just said aloud. I, yeah, I see aloud because a flop chicay always talks about how women should respect their husbands and that what's wrong with the black community now is that women are too masculine and women are too full of themselves and they don't respect their husband. They don't respect his position. They don't respect him being head of the household. So when I use aloud, I'm using aloud in her context because in this context, then her husband should be doing just that. Okay. I got you. Okay, I got you. I understand that. You know, so, yeah, that that I don't quite understand. And another thing that I hate, my daughter's asking me for a cash app for some food. Hold on. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, which is why I got to work all the third time. Um, another thing I don't understand, what is interesting, I understand it, is to see... I can't even. <laughs> to see when she was connected with Lamar, I'm whitehead. I was I, I know the things she said about him to me. I watched the interview when she you know the things he she said about him publicly. Hell, <laughs> right? And, and but see, I knew what about the interview prior. I knew everything. We were we were talking. Mm -hmm. You know, every a lot of some of the stories, all of the stories she's done concerning the church person. You know, I was the person behind that was giving her the connects and you know things of that nature. Because it's not her world, you know. So, and and we we respected each other. And we helped each other. I don't know how the rest of her relationships went. Mm -hmm. I helped put money in her pocket, according to her. You know, so I, I, I so when I saw her align with him. When she just, if you just scroll back, she just dragged him and set him up and made him say out of his mouth that he got out on a technicality. Um, so I know how she worked. So I, and to see her line, I said, hmm, this is interesting. And then to see Lamore, and then this, the other Lamore, which is known as Brian Ponder, because that's his middle name, which is, they're all Lamore. All of these are LAs. It's Larry, LaVontre, Lamore, Brian Porter, and Lamore Whitehead. They're all LAs. Mm -hmm. And to see that alliance between all these people. Now, I'm going to say this, and I know you can get upset. Okay. I, I, I don't like to see them use. I don't like to see that. Say that again. Something happened in your phone. It was, mm -hmm. I said I don't. I don't like to see them use Levantre because I. I think they're using him. Okay. I, it, it looks that way to me. I mean, it, it is. I mean, because they don't like me. They all fell out with me. Oh, and I forgot about the YouTube the original one. So there's four people that fell out with me. And he went and interviewed with all four, according to Tasha. Does she interviewed them? You know, so and and all, that's. Are you suggesting that somebody who has accused you of this does like you? Because it doesn't appear that. You I don't. This is I, that's this is that's like not imp that's <laughs> not important to me. Um, but what I just I mean I, I said this to somebody the other day. I said. It's about how are you mad that they're sort of calling old members' names from years ago? You know, a lot of, that that was like a whole nother life. And I said, no, I don't have any ill feelings toward anybody. How, I, I don't know how I don't know how to not love somebody that I love. I do know how to now. 
to set a boundary, not talk to you, not deal with you, because although I love you, you're toxic, you're dangerous, or you're not a part of my future, and you are a destiny snatcher. You know, so I I know how to do that now. You know, but I don't know how to get rid of the love. I mean, if somebody knows there's a pill or something, show me. So I can't be mad. Even not even that Tasha. And I don't know Brian Porter, Ponder. I don't know Lamore like Whitehead. Um, and I I don't know who's the other person. I don't end up first YouTube, I don't know I don't know them people, I don't have a relationship, but I have a relationship with Tasha and with Levantre, so I can't hate them. That's that's it's impossible for me to do I can't do it. Well, I, I, I'm not mad at that. I don't think that you should allow um, hate and death to send you to hell. So, um, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm cool with that. So with that being said, here it is. You have Levantre. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think your screen is frozen, but we can still hear you. But your Was I supposed to open it in Google? You can. Uh... Maybe that's better, more stable than Safari. Okay, yeah. Uh, are, are you going to try to... Let me, yeah, let me do that now. Okay, okay. Let me do that. Hold on. So, let me help Dr. Reed get up out of here. He's going to go out and come back in, you guys. Okay. So, the doctor is speaking to a situation with Flop Chique. Um, He still doesn't hate her, which... Good. Because folk go to hell for hating. The doctor is back. Okay, there you go. So, you have Levantre. Mm. What can you... Because I know that there there is a litigation. There was a litigation. I know that there's been all of that going on. I'm not sure what you feel comfortable and what you've been advised to say and not to say. But what can you tell the public about... Levantre, because we went over this text thread between you and Levantre, which I thought was so wild. Um, I'm not even sure if you, I, I don't know what you think of the text thread, because, I mean, I, it, that was one of the wildest things I've just witnessed in, in, in real time between two people. But what do you make of the situation with Levantre? Why, why is Levantre accusing you of what he's accusing you of? And, um, yeah, just what are your thoughts about that? Um, like I told this, no, what I, what, I mean, I don't know what's been said on the YouTube streets. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be aligned with what is being said in everybody's complaint. But I know how the internet works. It's just probably, people probably aren't even reading that and just listening to people talk. But if they would read the complaint from the case with that other YouTuber and with against Levantre, what they will find out is that this isn't, isn't the first time that I've heard this story. The first time I heard this story was in 2000 and I've been saying now, but it's really 2010. Yeah, 2010, when I first heard the story of these allegations. And, but then at this moment and Mako went up there to where they had moved to, I think they were staying with his brother Forelli, who was openly gay, but, and, and that was a whole situation. That, where it, I don't know, I'm going by what yeah, yeah. Montre well, Levantre told me, I don't know what the, I don't know what the truth is. I question everything now. Yeah. You know, but there was a there was a problem with, with that. You know, it was a whole situation. But anyway, so ultimately I was a yes for him to come back. I didn't like it. And it was shown through my actions for the next seven years until I closed the church. So what does that mean? That it was shown through your actions, but because prior to him leaving he was always around me, even if he wasn't living in one of my properties or in the property where I was living. When we got to church, I mean, it was it was just right there. I mean, and it was and even he, when he's staying in the house, he was there, there, there. I mean, we, you ask anybody that was in the church. I mean, it, OK, Levantre was Reed Shadow, you know, he was his um, 
you can tell that he had a lot of adoration and love toward me. He would dress like me, do everything like me, talk like me, um, singing like me. He would do but that's clear me. even from his Facebook posts towards you as an adult that there was very, there's very strong admiration for you. Well, that went on all the way to 2017, you know, but when after he apologized, he came back, we didn't even talk about it. I talked more about it with his mom and Shamako than I did him. Mm -hmm. uh, we, when he got there, it really wasn't that much talk about it. Once I forgave him, he explained I was being emotional. People was in my ear in Greensboro talking about your sexuality and stuff, and speculations and all this stuff. I don't know what was been what was happening there. And he said, and they tried to get me to call the police to try to get me. Oh, whole lot of stuff you told me. This is 2010. Okay, so, so no, 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 that's what I meant. So he had accused you of this far, far before 2017. Mm -hmm. He accused yeah. you of this in the mid 2000s, and mm -hmm. 2010. Not only did you, so you received him back on the strength of his begging the mother, and then he was he wanted to come back despite making those allegations. But what he told you is he blamed making those accusations on just being a lunatic. Uh, I, the, whatever you say. Is Basically. What you I mean, I'm emotional and it, I, I was a mess and blah, 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 blah. Now. Yeah, that was the conversation. And that it was him and his wife. Or what people, well, another thing I haven't heard is the, is the close relationship that me and his wife had. Now, see, that's not even been discussed. But me and his wife was was just as close as if she wasn't in the house, you know. So even when they left, because I kicked both of them out for frucking, um, and that Hold was on, you'd be a bit more nuanced than that because word on the curb was she was in her twenties and he was sixteen when you and Shamako discovered the the nature of the relationship. No, he was he wasn't the age. He was okay. So. He was 16. He stayed with Shamako when he was 16. When I walked into Shamako house summer of, of right before his 17th birthday and I seen him in these ugly clothes. Now this is not abnormal for me. I still do this to this day, but I, I'm stopping. I said, why you got that on? He said, what you mean? He used to call me the Apostle because I went by Apostle Reed. So it was combining the and Apostle and I had it on the back of my car. And I said, why you got that on? And so I think other people in the room was laughing because even Bishop, my mentor, talks about it. I'm still like that. You know, aesthetics, aesthetics mean a lot. And I said, come on, go with me. Me, him, Vincent. Um, I don't think Kendall was around at the time. No, Kendall wasn't around at the time. He was a member of the church, but he wasn't in any of any of the residences. And so Nada, I want you to be super clear when you're speaking, because you know people are going to hang on to every word. So you knew him at sixteen. You knew him at sixteen, going on seventeen. Like, like, it clarify that to the to the. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. As a pastor, you have to understand what is the pastor. You don't know, know, know the people in your church, especially in my church in Fayetteville. There were so many people. You didn't. You didn't. You don't know know the people, cause I'm still like this now with with the ministry now. Shamako and the team is like the hands on. They the, they the intake, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's always been the way of my ministry. Mm -hmm. You got three people who came into the ministry. Four, no three. No, oh, that's right. Gwen Hines. It was like a, I was like a father to her. I still love her to this day. I, I miss her. Whoever the hell um, is. That's that. Remember the um the young guy that called in. Well, all these people. I heard somebody say that that lawyer was saying was referring to Levantre as minor, minor, which is technically correct. Because anybody under eighteen, you can call the minor. But the reality is, if they're trying to make it seem like I was doing something with somebody underage. Let's suppose that something did happen between me and Levantre. I didn't meet Levantre till he was over the age of consent. So that's really the reason why that I the went. Time that his now wife met him, who he's now married to. And they were fucking. We won't.
Okay, so that's okay because you're going all around the Marbury Bush. I, 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 I want you to speak directly to that. How old was Levon Trey when you and Pastor Bryant discovered his sexual relationship to his now wife, who was a prophetess, I believe, at the church at that time? Yes, but see, that we don't really know, but because see, that was all in the same house, right? Went, but I'm asking you, like, the- simply, when did y'all discover it? When did y'all? What age was he when y'all discovered their relationship? He had to be, he had to be 17 going on 18. Yeah, because I was told by the church members yeah. that he was 17 when y'all yeah. found yeah, out. That's right. and, yeah, they, was and they speculated that they more than likely had been involved a lot, obviously, before that. That was just when the church found out about their relationship. Well, he was sleeping with somebody else when he was 16, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah, because I heard he was a big hoe in the church, allegedly, too. Big hole. Well, he did have more um, offenses than anybody else. So yeah, it, that was, I mean, you can say that, you know. So, so yeah, he had a few situations, you know. So uh, I mean, he was. A, I mean, he had. He was. A, he was a child without a father, and that's the whole. You know, that's a whole nother story. Okay. Well, yeah, and let's not get into that story. Let's because okay. you you <laughs> still piecing this one together. Okay. <laughs> so he was seventeen. When y'all discovered the relationship, between, and how old was the the prophetess? She's five plus years older than him. 18, 19, 20. 20. Oh, so she was like 22. Right. So, wow. yeah, this started having sex or relationship when he was a minor, if I use ponder's words to make it look bad. You know, uh, yeah, he was a minor, you know, so yeah, that was that. But uh, what what did, did I miss something? Something you asked me. I was about to say you met him at sixteen, going oh, yeah. to seventeen, because he was yeah. living with Shamako. From what I understand, Shamako was having trouble with him. You met him on his then going his seventeenth birthday, I believe. Yeah. Well, no, I met him right before his seventeenth birthday. Okay. Because I he was six, he was sixteen. So when I say met him, that's when I, me, Vincent, and some others took him to the store to get him some clothes. And I told him, you need to upgrade your entire wardrobe. You're a black man, and you he was big baggy pants from Rayford. So he was just like a like a hood boy. And so I said, you can't be dressing like that, which is not abnormal. In fact, he didn't even get what most people get. Because normally I would go say, okay, can you take me to your house? Go to the house. I said, you trust me? They say, yeah. And I would take everything out of their closet and then take them shopping. Male or female, it didn't make But he was dressed like a country bumpkin bum, and you took him to upgrade his wardrobe. He was living with Jamaco. What what because I want you to clarify like what I what I understand. Uh, that's true. So Jamaco was having trouble. What kind of trouble with Levantre allegedly? Well, like I said, he was he was all, he was already having sex with somebody with, else, you know, and and there was an issue with her, with her as well at the, at the time, you know, because that was her second offense, you know. So the way that I ran that church, we ran that church. You had people off the street, and y'all church had, needed to walk. It was too much running going on in that. Day. <laughs> yeah, so there was a whole lot. Of, Slow jog with the young with the young people, and we were young too, you know. So it was it was a lot to deal with. So. I know his mom had issues with him, and Shamako had some problems around the house. I took him to, to change his clothes to get him a better um, outfit, and then I remember him moving into my house, the thirty-two sixteen or Lusty Drive. He moved into there January of that next year. So he so he turned seventeen in October. January he moved into my house with my nephew Kendall. I want to say, and yeah, I moved out. It's actually because I spoke to one of them. Yeah, yeah, but see, I moved out and then asked Lockley to move in, him and his wife, so that, and then, oh my God, him and his wife and his kids. Uh, Leonard, I don't know, like, what, like, this is not hard to follow. Larry met him formally when he was 16, going on 17, like, literally going on 17, like, about to celebrate his 17th birthday he was living with shamako who was having trouble with him 
because his mama was having trouble with him. She gave him over to the men of the church because at that time, that's how the gender roles were set up. Women raised girls and men raised boys. So she handed him over to the men of the church. One of those men was Shamako, who, who then handed him over to Reed because he was a big country hoe in the church. Okay, so because he loved and adored uh, Pastor Reed from afar, they all thought this was a great idea to have yeah. him under Larry's direct mentorship, which he a had not been under prior. Right, a whole lot of moms married. Gotta and listen, single. boo. Listening is fundamental. A whole lot of moms married and single would, would do that to me and Shamako. I mean, they would have dumped their, their kids off. And that's what she did, which was the problem I think her other son had for really, because he, he had a problem with her and how she had moved with churches and men prior. I remember that. And so he had an audience. So I talked to him too. And so um, I moved him into into the house. Some other folk moved into Marco house. That's how he got to my house. Cause it was like a migration of people coming up from Fayetteville, moving into Raleigh, Durham, where we had church. And so I moved Lot Lear, his wife, his two sons and daughter into the house. And that left um, LaVon Trey, my two nephews and their mom, my sister. So how many is that? There's seven people, but it's a four bedroom house. It worked out. So it has share, share room. Oh, the house by Mexicans. <laughs> right. Yeah. So everybody, when, when we get somebody on their feet, the job, checking the account, whatever, then up and out, like, up and out, up and out. It was like a ro rotating. It was rotating because these people wanted to come. Same thing happened in Atlanta. They, when we moved to Atlanta, they wanted to follow the minister. And I did not ask anybody to come, but they they wanted to follow the minister. I was moving with what God was showing me to do. Okay. So and I want to so, get a deep off and to get to you and Levante, but I want to segue real quick. Would you now, after you've done the type of hardcore ministering that you've done, would you advise that level of rawness when it comes to a ministry? Because um, I I'm personally not taking nobody off the streets because of this type this type of insanity. Um, no. Now, in your case, this type of insanity hasn't been something that has destroyed you, but it has destroyed other people. This has led to... Um, there's even a guy that William McWig, Bartholomew McCray, a pastor that he uh, had scrutinized, who drove himself to insanity. And that man is still not right to this day over... Uh, the blackmail over the extortion over the things that the way that people you know respond to things being done to their reputation not everybody is built and not everybody in ministry expects that it ever get this dark and ugly because most people have a very rosy colored lens and expectation of ministry that everybody is sane everybody's right everybody's loving and all people need is some food and a hug and a loving community and that's it and then before you know it right. You know, people stealing from you, people, you know, are, are you know, I mean, all the, the insanity ensues. I mean, well, you, you know, you, I mean, and then ministry, ministry, ministers are also not doing any mental health check ins with people that they just take in either. So it, it's just like you don't even know what you're getting. You don't know. You don't know how what level of trauma this person is in. You don't know. They haven't been under no E evacuation. Do you think that these are things that churches should start in point, especially when churches have very close relationship yeah. to their congregants? Well, I must say this. The original question you asked, no, I do not advise it, particularly because the time has totally changed, mm. not because of this situation. Mm. Now, I must say that we had murderers mm. um, straight out of jail, straight out of, I mean, prison, you know, who've served anywhere from 10 to 28 years. We had drug addicts. I used to go, I have gotten a stripper off the stripper pole, went in the club. You know, I, that it was a certain type of ministry that I was doing. I don't know if that type of ministry is still going on, but that's what I was doing. So that's where all my training, people training come from from doing that type of ministry, people with HIV, with AIDS. We, we everything that happens in our world was in, in in the church, you know. So that was, you know, that that I I wouldn't suggest that type of hands-on 
ministry for anybody now, I think you should send them to some kind of professional therapeutic mm. space place retreat. The outreach do program. Do. Um, yeah. yeah, I had I, I don't advise to advise to do that for a church. If not you a mission, maybe so, but yeah. you know. I no, 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 no. I, I wouldn't advise that. So he got into the house at, at 17, but I moved, me and Vincent. Look oh how Vincent was in the house too. We moved and I didn't come back to that house until 2000. I was renting it out. I didn't come back to that house until 2009. Yeah. So when I came back to that house, he was there. Kendall was there. Then I think eventually I, I moved some other people that was in there. If memory serves me correct. And he was there until I was in London one day. I think I had his mom in St. Martin at the same time. And what and, was there? Uh, evangelizing and doing? No, I had a church there. Oh, okay. And so it's in the islands. So um, I was in London in a revival. I had her there because Michael and Latrice just came back from there and she went. And then he was doing what he was doing, wasn't supposed to be doing. Vincent called him and he called me. I said, that's it. Kick him out. So when I got back home, he was gone. So I didn't mm-hmm. next thing I heard was these rumors mm-hmm. that I that I forgave if he came and apologized and he came back into the ministry. So I never reconnected with him closely. Okay, so let's say that. Hold on, hold on. Because uh, cause, like, let's pause real quick. Mm-hmm. You also do know that the average person cannot even maybe can forgive a person accusing them of something like that but certainly cannot ever see themselves getting back into proximity of somebody who accuses them of such now for me as a i i've seen people like you because my grandma is like you i have like there's empaths and there's like super empaths and (laughs) and so i know everybody don't operate on the same level of you know everybody don't have the same capacity but like what what do you tell yourself in the process of not only forgiving somebody but also letting them back close to you after they weaponize an allegation like that against you like is this all for god as a minister are you looking at it like you know what uh, i mean this ain't about me this is about these people seeing the light or what's your okay that right there you just said it i mean because you church it's church brain 101 i mean because <laughs> I'm not thinking. I'm saying, okay, I forgave him, but something in me just couldn't 100% oh. trust anymore. So I would, he would tell me, you know, that he needed me, you know, to pull closer and wanted to be closer. And I would, I was, I would say something like, you know, the past and how it was. I don't want him to get us get back dealing very close anymore. Uh-uh, I'm not. I want. So he to, was back, know. but with stipulations and boundaries. Like he was back, but to the bare minimum of back. Like, oh, absolutely, yeah. Cause he, yeah, cause he played at the church. I mean, he collected that check, and he would be at church service. I'll see him, and his wife at church. We'll take pictures, him, you know, laugh there. Or if we, when I went on the road singing, you know, for like three years, he was the drummer. So I would put, always put my musicians and singers one place and I would be in, an, in another hotel um, or in another space or another floor, you know? So I didn't really see him unless we were on stage. I remember going, you know, a rehearsal, a sound check, mm-hmm. church, praise and worship. I just cut all of that. I remember one time, I let him come to the house in the middle of the night, but that was because he was distraught with something that was happening personally between him and his wife. And I let him come that time. But outside of that, I don't remember. Oh, I remember another time he came to the house and he wanted to go somewhere, but I didn't, I made sure somebody went with us because I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable. Now I I felt, you should not have felt comfortable considering what he had already said. Yeah. but yeah, sense. I mean, I would have did a lot more, and he he would have never been around me and my drum and my saxophone again. But God, you know, but you putting up reasonable boundary is reasonable for sure. Yeah, I mean, but I was still being nice. I remember my birthday sending stuff. I think I did, and after all, it was. Oh, I forgot this, Lord Jesus. Do you know what I did when? 
Cause when they, oh Lord, I totally forgot this. So when they wanted to come back, they were having to drive from Greensboro. They needed somewhere to live. And I put them in Latrice apartment. She left her apartment so they can have somewhere to stay. I don't know what went on with that. I think something went rogue with that. Then they asked me, this after they came back. They asked, you know, he called me, you know, I, I need this, I need that, I need that. I said, okay. I rented an apartment in my name and put him and his wife in it for a year. Straight in. You know, so that, but they were one of 10, you know, so, you know, so that was, it was just my nature. And it, and this nature I kept all the way up until recent. When I turned 44 this year, that's when I changed. I started changing. That's, that's what I can moved. say. You have mm -hmm. been consistent. And your forgiveness, even when it came to unhinged, uh, I mean, people couldn't people couldn't get you to see the light. You were still willing to humanize her and rationalize her. And I know other people you've done that with as well, whose situations haven't been so public, but I've known about personally. So your behavior in our in terms of being extremely long suffering and kind of like needing needing the worst of something to happen before you like haul ass out of there mm -hmm. i applaud yeah. you i used to be like that but i'm also cleaning that up i can't let i just can't let all that happen to me before it's just too much to deal with on the back end too much to deal with and you got too much to lose because people like that they don't they don't know what you've done to get where you at and so they don't even have psychologically emotionally spiritually the wherewithal or maturity and development yeah. to to handle and manage your energy, your life, and what you do. They can't. They, they didn't qualify to walk with you. And I had to learn that. So getting back to the timeline, which all of this is in the complaint, I think. Mm -hmm. um, when he, when I found out what he did, kicked them out, I came back home. My life went, went on. He came back. I apologized. I really never connected to him again from 2010 all the way to 2017 when I stopped the church in January. Now, when I stopped the church, I also stopped everybody's bag because I had employees, even those that was overseas. And the last employee check I cut was May of 2017. So it was I stopped the church in January. But then I had to work and do things to still have money in the ministry account. I was putting the money in the ministry account to pay the staff. And so the last one I did was in May of 2017. So when I sat back and I looked at everything, I, I was like, because my by this time, I'm already doing Larry Live. So and people are looking at me sideways, you know, cause I went and got tatted up, got my earrings, and I'm online talking about what's happening in the world. And so people are like, what the hell is you doing? Apostle Reed is doing this. You know, a lot of people just used to what was used to see me on the Word Network, um, the other big Christian networks, and then I pop up online viral for something that I said sideways about something that happened in the public. So people were like, Oh my God, he's back. Everybody's saying I'm back. I received somebody text me the other day that just saw me on Larry Live, who hadn't seen me in years since since me prophesying preaching, and came with this long drawn out prophecy, um, you know, because of me doing Larry Live was totally in their flesh. And so when that happened, I began to take a lot of inventory. Like I think about the houses, the weddings, the funerals. You know, the things I've done for all of these people all these years that sort of like abandoned me. And I, I was hurt. I was also going through the divorce with Lisa. It got finalized in May as well. Everything happened in May. So and that first got, came with her running down to Florida to be a lesbian with your children. Right, exactly. So she, so then that she got married in, in May. So all of that was going on. So I just started. That's a lot to go on. Like that's a lot of kind of like a lot of I growing found, things and life a crisis. I, had, and I, filed bank, I, filed, I filed bankruptcy that same year uh, in March, and I lost my Mercedes, my, the one I love, in May as well. I'm sure um, the can relate. 
and I, I um, had just lost my house, the 3216. Well, I ended up selling it right before foreclosure. Um, but I went through all the changes and my children was gone. You know, so I started taking inventory and I said, mm, these people have just moved on with their life. And I'm going, they see I'm going through all this. Ain't nobody called, check on me, nothing. I said, you know, I'm just going to move ahead. So I went through like two months between May, June, when I came out of it in July. And I talk about this um, on my platform. You can go back and watch the videos. And I began in that time, 2017. I just cut everybody off and I started having a whole lot of dreams. And the, one of the dreams I had, Levantre was in it and his wife mm. and at Kendall. And without telling the dream, I woke up from that dream and I just had a question mark over everybody's heart towards me all them years that I felt used. And so I cut everybody off. I mean, eh, everybody. I blocked, unfriended and blocked. No, I unfriended. I, I blocked. I unfriended and blocked. Then I unblocked, but kept everybody unfriended. I was going through changes. And he had called Marco, according to what Marco told me. Levantre had called Marco. Right. And yeah, and that he was upset, you know, or, or, at, or at least asking questions. And so then, come on, you, I, I still wasn't fully healed and changed from the way that I was pastoring these people. So I went. When I got his message inbox, I was like, oh, my God, his feelings is hurt. You know, I could hear it in, in the message. And if you scroll up prior to, I think I sent that to you. you prior it up. To, you, you like yeah, prior to that long message he sent and to us talking about molestation, he was saying, you know, why ain't we talking, da, 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 da. And I sent the message saying, oh, we, I think I got it. Hold on for a minute. I just pulled it up here. It's on the screen. Oh, it is? Oh, if you can see it. But yeah, I just pulled it up. I don't think I can see it. But uh, if you go prior to that, it says... Um, a read so it's clear that the convo I had with... No, no. Pri prior to that. I don't have the prior to that message. You know what? I don't know why you ain't got it. Yeah. These so are this the ones I was able to Because I had these since last year. So... So no, look, look at. The, I should have sent you all of this. What? Oh wow! Send it to me now, if you can. I'm at the screenshot. It says, it says, um, our relationship. I said to him on March the fifth, two thousand seventeen. See how we're going through that, yeah. I yeah. said our relationship isn't the same because of life, but I still care about you and hope the best for you. I know I was a big part of your life, and we are not as close. But we can all. You can always talk to me. Just thought you needed to know. He said, I appreciate you saying that. I've been feeling that we needed to talk recently. Things are definitely different, but no love lost. That's March. I said, okay, then I'm ready when you you ready, nigga. He said, cool, LOL. And then I was telling him, go check out the show, Empower. I was doing Oh, I do have those. I do have those. I have those. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and he said, whatever, whatever, LOL. Is that the new Facebook page? And I sent it to him. And... Um, he said that his wife was focused on work, and I said, I understand that. Then, after Marco told me what he told me about him calling, July the 14th, I sent him a message. Hey, Trey, I spoke to Marco. He said he saw you, and you asked why I deleted you, and consequently, Ashley, from Friends List. I explained I had. I had. I'll hit you tomorrow. Nice chatting out to you in March to chat, and that we were supposed to chat when you were ready. Oh, God, it's mistakes i later had a vision the first week of may oh here we go hmm. where i heard combo you were a part of concerning me and church that i would think you would elect to have with me especially because of our last communication here on facebook i decided that same hour to unfriendly <laughs> because it was clear that there was something definitely that needed to be discussed as i felt in march but for some reason, you didn't want to talk directly to me. Then when Marco told me you asked, I felt I owed you an explanation, although I had rather you just inbox and ask me. But under the circumstances, I see why you didn't. As I said last time, I love you, still care, and hope the very best. And that's when he sent the next day at 4 o'clock in the morning the message where you um, that everybody has. But when Tasha called me, she said, that I had texted somebody that I apologized. So I went in my 
phone and I put the word apologize. And what came up was actually the third person that was accusing me of giving the HIV B where I said to him, he said something about he was apologizing to me. So I just said, and I apologize too. And I was very vague. I think I showed those as well. Now, this is what I can't remember. I think when he sent me that, I may have responded hastily and either I was fussing or either I was coddling. Mm -hmm. But on my end, I don't have that response to that e email. The only thing I got is my next response. Hey, Bontre, thought of you. But knowing me, I probably, I could have said apologize because I did kick him out. I cut him off and all this kind of stuff. You like I, so I think, Quan at this point or Levantre? Both of them, because I, I probably said the same thing to both of them. See what Tasha said on the And more importantly, whatever you was apologizing for, you damn sure wasn't apologizing for giving somebody <laughs> you don't have. To, you just don't have it. So that's what the test, so the test results prove that whatever you were apologizing for, it wasn't for that. No, and 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 I don't. Let's see. That's why I can't understand what Tasha was thinking. She must have been trying to bait me in a conversation because she kept saying, "I know it came from you," which I don't know how you verified that in this digital age. I I know it came from you, and you apologize for listening. I said, "You ain't that ain't no such thing." I said, "That ain't never happened." I said, and I kept saying the thing. I said, "If, if you got that, somebody Photoshop." I said, God, that ain't a bit more happening than a man in the moon. Because that wasn't, I didn't even know him at those ages. Mm -hmm. And that was the that thing that made me, thing. right, that was, the, that's what made me do this lawsuit. Because I had to stop being the pastor I was to these people years ago. Because like I said, I still love these people. I, yeah. I don't hate them. I said, if he is making up a story. But you know, hold on. And, uh, before you said, I I never thought about that. When we look at this from the outside in, all we see is these egregious claims being made about you from these people. But mm -hmm. from your angle in, I think we forget, you actually love these people at some yeah. point. You knew them. They, you were a part of their life. But see, I never, I mean, like, I, but that, that just, it makes the compassion make sense is what I'm saying. Like, because, from the outside in, because we're not in relationship to these guys, it's like, you know, I would have pow, 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 pow. But, you know, we forget that from 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 your seat, like, there there was actual relationship, etc. And uh, yeah. um, because listen. I can only because I can only be that forgiven in re when I love people, when I I don't love people. My my book yeah. meter is very black and white. When yes. I love you, oh god, like you get a lot of room to play in my face. Unfortunately, yes. oh my god, come on, talk conscious. Yeah, that's that. You're exactly right. So, and and I my my first the L in my my name I always say means loyal. Mm -hmm. You have to do something serious for me to be done with you. And when I was hearing what he was saying <clears throat> in that first interview, and the, and well, all of them what they were saying, I couldn't I couldn't believe it, and I just flung it off. I I, I wasn't that worried about it, but it was really Tasha K, you, um, first, yeah, you first, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tasha K. Um, oh, 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 my publicist that said, you cannot allow this to be said. You have to do something. And I didn't even do it in 2021. <laughs> I just sent a cease and desist. Mm -hmm. I almost sent it. Um, this year was the was the year where I, I filed. I, I didn't even do it then. But that's when I filed. When I kept hearing it being like, so he's making an age, an age up when I wasn't even in relationship with him. So he's trying to make this something. And that the entire property never existed at those ages either. That, that is true. That's right. Board. That is right. That is right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, he, no, the property didn't exist at the age of 14. Right. He changed it and made it 15 because he turned um, 15 in the year I built that house in October. 
I closed on the house in October. So like he turned 15 October the the I think it's birthday the 18th. I think the 18th. I closed the 15th. I moved in like the last week before November. So the house was built, but I I wasn't in it until like the end of October and I still didn't know him. We were not in a relationship. And Marco won't even stand in Raleigh then. Marco didn't move to Raleigh until the um, next year. And that's who, who he was staying with before he ended up staying with you. Mm. No, him and Marco were still staying back in Fayetteville or, or Rayford. Oh, so they were staying together outside of Raleigh. Right. Okay. Him and his mother were staying in, in Raleigh, I mean, in um, Fayetteville in North Carolina. But I was already in Raleigh. Then Marco moved up in the same neighborhood around the corner. So then he, I could walk to Marco's house. So he and his mama moved in with Marco, him, his mama, and his now wife. They were all standing there along with probably six or seven other people. Mm. So, yeah. So one day I'm walking into that house. Cause my girls will be over there a lot because they were taking care of my, my children while I was on the road. So by that time, at least we were busted up. So it was one of those times of coming over there when I seen him in that outfit that he had you know so that's that's how that how that was yeah so that when i heard all of them story i said so this has to be malicious and by this time he done went from that youtuber and then that's what made me foul this year when he showed up on with, the big lip with yeah with lamore whitehead then that lawyer brian ponder responded to old gods cease and desist because she sent a new one this year because she was able to find where they live because they don't live in so many places in georgia but they got evicted out of all of them even the the one that we sent the letter to last year they evicted out of that so that's when she searched other states outside and found them at his mom house so then after that lawyer thing then that was the that was the last no 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 the white hair thing that was the last straw I said, okay, this is, he's being malicious. I don't, he's mad at me. He's upset with me. Okay. So I got to protect myself. So that's when I went into that lawsuit, into filing def defamation. I had to protect my brain. I mean, my brain is steadily growing. You know, people looking at my YouTube and they think that's my brand. That's my funnel. My, my main stuff is not Larry Live. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, so, um, that they, I had to protect myself because of what they were were doing, and I'm glad I did it. I mean, we got to refile um, again, which we will do. Um, I don't want to. Somebody asked me, said, "Did you ever even want to file against?" Them? I said, "No," because, like I said, how, how you love somebody and then do stuff to harm them, and I see if you're crazy, but if you're insane, this person you is. Did you? I mean, this person has created a situation in their mind and is perpetuating that situation as a truth for the both of you to the public. That's not saying if that never happened. If you create something in your mind and sell it to other people as the truth, there is something wrong with your mind. You do not take your fantasies and your desires and then you narrate them as the truth. You know what? That's funny. You, you're so funny and clever. It's not your fan. Is this? <laughs> but um, but the truth is this. You would be surprised by how many people harbor yeah, desire for people for <laughs> the people in power, especially when it comes to the past. The man, both yeah. men and women, lust yeah. and have lustivities after the past. Lord, well, I'm I'm awake. I'm a I'm, <laughs> at, at court with the jurist over there is what I'm gonna tell them, tell that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But the the the, the whole story and and it's gonna uh, they, all of them are gonna be terribly shocked. I mean, cause my story it's my story first since I'm the one. But there were other places that he stayed and they have that their story. And I would have never shared those things. Y'all know how I do my platform. I'm like that in my real life. At least to have tell told y'all many times. If we know something. He act like he don't know. And then after it come out, he said, well, let me tell you, you know, and I tell every, <laughs> tell everything. And that's what I'm going to do in the court. And, and, and I don't know why 
this wasn't been done as it relates to the pastor that he had prior um, that he alleged exposed him to something sexual. I want to say strip club. I can't remember, but I can't remember, so don't quote me on that. And But I do remember him saying that his cousin, that he did stay with him and his wife, molested him. He told me that. So, but I don't know if that's true. You know, I, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Even with Del Quan, Del Quan said that the, the, the pastor prior that have molested him. I don't know if it's true because if they lying on me, then they. I don't, I don't know if I believe the stories that they said. But about you know, that. Like, what I feel in my spirit, man, I feel like something did happen to these boys, and that's why it was easy for them to just switch the names up. I think that that story probably is true. Devon Trey probably was touched by somebody. It just wasn't you. And no. he just slapped your name on that experience. There is 100% absolutely no forcibly fondling, like he put on that thing. He said forcibly fondling and something else. Was a child molestation? That ain't happened at the hands of Larry Reed. And I don't know why. Why he would say that. That that means you're sitting with me and I and I forcibly only get that means I initiate something and 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 take advantage of you like a predator. <laughs> if I wanted you at 17 years old, if you're listening, I would have asked. <laughs> And you had to give me consent before I even hugged you. I mean, that to do this, I have to believe it's malicious unless they just some other stuff that's that's going on. He trying to work out, which I do know some things. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna tell you what: when you mix attraction with revenge, you get this. This allegation allows Levon Trey to hurt you the way that he feels you hurt him by rejecting him for the second time. Because his pain would have been worse the second time. The first time was like, okay, he kicked mm. me out, da 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 boom. But I was able to get back in his graces. He didn't let me back in. The second time opens up that wound all over again. It was going to be worse for him the 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 second time with the re- Injection. But this allegation allows him to get back at you. It also allows him to put mm. you and him in a sexual scenario. Something that he been ruminating and fantasizing over, I believe, in his mind. And okay, first, to, let, me, let me say something to that. I'm going to tell you why that's so unfair. And maybe I shouldn't say this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm I don't know if the lawyers, but I'm going to say this. It's, it's, it's unfair to say I put him in any sexual position or situation at all. And I am not the only person that he has I'm gonna say that for court. I'm gonna say that for court. Yeah. But that, when I tell you that, that can be more off. Mm-hmm. And that can. I know why you're saying it. And that, and, and there are other people to tell their truth. And other what people happened, are going to. What what happened? What what he did? To, see, his mama, his wife, brother. They don't know this because they won't. We were keeping them. <laughs> we were keeping them. They they. And the reality is, shout out to Vincent Hill and Shamako Bryant. They, they were more, even more involved than me. You know, so I'm going to tell you why I said what I said, though, Larry. Because I remember I did a video last year called The Dark Side of the Me Too Movement. And it explored the, the shadow side where you had men, men whose lives were completely destroyed over claims that women who they went to school with women they were on the campus with alleged some of these women claim to have been gang banged gang 
R-A-P-E-D, etc. Come to find out these allegations were weaponized because a dude didn't want to date them or because a dude had broke up with them or because a dude decided that he liked the best friend more than da 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 da. And so that's why I say when you couple revenge with sexual attraction, oftentimes you get the convenience of he molested me, he R-A-P-E-D me, he sexually violated me. And this is historical. This has happened to plenty of athletes. It's happened to plenty of jocks. It's happened to plenty of professors where you have people that have weaponized these yes. allegations because of being disgruntled, being rejected, etc. And it's nasty. People are this nasty. Yeah. But Some of these guys my, deleted themselves. One of my Some of these guys deleted themselves as a result of those allegations. Some of the guys never even made it to be vindicated. They would later be vindicated as innocent but took their own lives as a result of losing their scholarships, as a result of having uh, police brought into their life and being under investigation and the embarrassment of that that came, you know, from their families and their reputations. Like, this is something that has really costed people. But see, let me tell you what one of the lawyers on the team said surrounding us. They said, Mr. Reed, um, I don't know what you're made out of. I said, what you mean? They said, we have dealt with this. People we know were innocent who had to end up with their name on that sexual offense list or lost their job and careers from a lie. They said, and you act like this isn't even happening and you're still thriving. I said, well, for one thing, that this is a 2010 old lie. And, and the other thing is, did you have the clients have the Holy Ghost and pray <laughs> and pray and sing? You know, so I, you know, people look at my job while doing Larry Live, but they they don't really celebrate my brilliance as they should because I who I am off of Larry Live. What well, Larry Live is me, but my practice on a personal level. If you are if you with me and the first in the morning anywhere in my house or near my door. You're gonna hear me in intercession. If I have not stopped, I ain't changed none of that. If you in my Patreon, you know. So and people don't understand how to use a brand, and that's one thing I celebrate Tasha with. She knows people lust for mess mm -hmm. and for the salacious, mm -hmm. and she knows how to create it. But more importantly, too, she knows specifically when it comes to you. People already mm -hmm. speculate about your sexuality. People already have certain attitudes about how how flippant you speak, despite your your title. People, she knows that you are controversial, and it's very easy to weaponize allegations against somebody who's already controversial for whatever reason. But con yes, right, conscious that speculation about sexuality is the. I just think a lot of people want to fuck me. It's simple as that because. Yeah. I am so transparent. There's nothing to speculate. No, I tell more than what you need to know. <laughs> yes, you do. I, I, I tell what I have done, what what I've thought about, what I feel, what I'm what I, I tell too much. So mm -hmm. and to have a speculation when all of the truth is out there, I, you just obsessed with me. There, there got to be it and find me, you know, intriguing or something. It got to be that because I don't know what you're speculating about when I done told you everything. But you got to understand, see, I couldn't make sense of why people were obsessed over me and you sexually. But then when I realized that I look like a top dollar hoe and you a top dollar nigga, it just, <laughs> it just, makes, it just makes sense. It's like there's no way. They can't be. CTV is a bad bitch, and Larry is that nigga. It, it, it's got to be. So I understand it now why people can't get over it. Yeah. And you, know, and you said, I've said, I've said we haven't met yet, which is basically your fault because you were supposed to come for Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, and oh, <laughs> that is not my fault. <laughs> Actually. And then, and then, and then. You've said it. I've said it. You said it today, earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 
somebody text me and said, oh, conscious, just say the same thing. So I said, that was always the case. People don't understand. We, this, we're doing comedy. We're doing commentary. We're just talking, flipping, and entertaining you. Some stuff you shouldn't take so so serious. Please. You know, but now that these people yeah. are saying, saying all this crazy stuff, I mean, now we got to be like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Punt the brakes. No, we, we ain't even did that. You know, we, we haven't even seen each other yet per that person, which we have. And it don't to. even matter that we haven't because clearly it has not kept people from talking, which is why I said, which is why I said I wasn't going to change up my playful lingo because at this point I know this is something that people want to be true. And matter of fact, it's going to make it worse when we actually do meet. So I'm just like, just have fun then. Just get carried away. Just get carried away, man. Going to take pictures. We are going to put it over the internet and get make them talk. I, I make we. I might take the picture when you land in my arms, just like <laughs> Matthew <laughs> Stevenson, just like a woman, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Matthew Stevenson, his spiritual um, son daughter. Yeah. Uh, okay, see now you're gonna be on your Matthew Stevenson shit. Okay, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just cutting up. Love Matthew. I'm just cutting up. Cutting up. Yeah. But yeah. Well, it is good to see you in good spirits, and um, I think that you, I mean, I think this is the first time you've publicly kind of really spoke, spoke yeah. about you and Levantre. I don't recall you ever just speaking about I don't. I don't remember. I may have. I don't know. There's been so much stuff going on. I don't know. Maybe when we was talking about that um, other YouTuber, I don't know. But I, it feels like the first time. It yeah. feels like the Definitely to this degree. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This so, to this degree. of course, Levantre Andrews is listening. They all are. What would you say to him? Don't let these people use you to get at me. But it's too late. I mean, because you, you know, went and talked and said some everything. You know, but um, don't let them use you. And re remember, get everybody out your ear. And, and go to a therapist and talk about your whole life, the father stuff, all of that stuff prior to me. And just make sure that you are not allowing your anger at me to make you make up forcibly fondling. I don't know how in the hell you can come up with that, with the nature and the way our relationship went, you know. And, and let me say this, and this could make him upset because this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. I, I feel when I look back, Marco, Vincent, Joshua, Nathan were all telling me, even Cameron, were all telling me years ago, you don't know, Levantre, you know, behind your back, which I did find this out. Mm -hmm. um, that he was calling me, saying that I was his daddy. Where well, people thought I, he was my real son. Mm. You know, I didn't know he was saying that. This was after everything was over. I didn't know that he had said that I was supposed to buy him a car when he graduated and some a suit to this event we were going to. I didn't know any of that stuff because I'm on. I I was in and out. I was dating some other woman. We were engaged. That was a small part of my life, so I don't. Even, I don't. I didn't even pay attention to what was happening. But looking back, a part of me do feel like that he manipulatively gained access to my personal space and used me and my position in ministry and money to make himself feel better about himself, his life, and, and everything. I feel that way, mm -hmm. and he was the only one though. Now he wasn't the only one, but he was the closest, probably. Yeah. Um, or one of the closest. So, well, and because I remember feeling like that in 2009. So, although he was in my home then, I totally washed my hands of him. Even when I would be home, I didn't hardly deal with him. You know, which then late months later, I think his grandma, somebody had definitely family, November 2009. I don't know how I remember that. But I remember that was like the last Dylan. I mean, he was still reaching for reaching for me, and I'm like, uh, nah. You know, if he needed something, I was throwing some money. But I really wasn't dealing, dealing with him, although he was in my house. And so when I went to London, that's when he done what he done. And Vincent called him. And I The difference him. between being here and being present. You was here. I was there, but wasn't present. Like, oh, no, mm -hmm. I was. I remember when he came back to the ministry 
and I was in church near the end of the ministry. And I was talking about when I went through the divorce release and stuff. And I was talking about how I had lost all my confidence. And he said, he remember him telling me in the foyer of the church, he said, he said, the pastor, he said, I couldn't even believe once you were standing with the truth. He said, but you walk with so much confidence. He said, I looked to you for, for confidence and model after you. And you said you didn't have none. I said, I sure didn't. I said, I said, I have a drug. I said, I'm running all over the world preaching at all these churches. I had to preach two churches on Sunday. I had to preach at the church in Millville and preach at my church, you know, later on in the day and run to the London church, the St. Martin church. Then I had my own itinerary of other churches that weren't under my covering. You know, it was a lot. And I wasn't, I, I was just making it happen for him and everybody else. I'm going to take care of everybody. And so a part of me do feel like that I was used to to um, heal, I put quotes around that, a father fracture, um, to find out, I don't know what Tasha say is the truth or not about this, to find out that Sharon would say anything negative towards me when I done this for her, you know? And, and even when she left the church after, because I had, corrected her or confronted her on something. She left the church. She left him there. You know, he was still there, you know, until the close. You know, he he came back. He didn't leave. She left. But he stayed until I, I closed that. I, a part of me does does feel that he manipulatively gained access to my personal space to use me, my position, and my money to better himself and just feel better about himself and his his life. You know, I remember first That's feeling what's like so dangerous, Larry, about being an empath is that we oftentimes become the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. People will heal themselves by projecting onto us yeah. what somebody else is actually responsible for. Mm -hmm. And because of the empathic nature, that ability to be a sponge and to transmute and kind of the welcoming of pain, because empathic people are healers. So obviously hospitals attract sick sickness. They attract brokenness, attract mm -hmm. people in need who have issues. And so there's that dynamic there. Most empaths don't understand that about their dynamics. So when they're looking at their life, like why my life look crazy? Why well, I got all these crazy folk in there? Because yeah, you were living, walking hospital and don't even know it. And all these people are attempting to work out their soul salvation through proximity to you. And sometimes You'll be able to teach them how to resolve that in a proper way, or sometimes people will just use you as an altar and mm -hmm. pour all of that sickness onto, and they walk away free and leave you in ruins. I want you to know you preaching. That's what I want you to know. I always do. I always do. You is preaching. <laughs> I, I think when this is all said and done, Larry, that you should write a book. I think that there's a lot of women and men and leadership and pastoral roles of all kinds who are not aware of how nuanced that position is. And you now can officially speak to the dark side of leadership, the dark but side. I did. When I, when I covered the Matthew Stevenson situation some years, 19, I, 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 I talked about it. Um, I did. I didn't say no names, and I didn't give. I didn't tell specific situations. But I said the way that you were pastoring, and way that you this very close thing you know. I said this is gonna blow up in your face. I said it, and I said, it, and I'm concerned. I said because people start making allegations and stuff. This close as you always close that one be boys, and that's exactly what happened. You know. So um, yeah, I've learned. I've learned a whole lot. There's a lot of pastors. A lot of pastors who are still pastoring, especially women, who are still pastoring the way I pastored them years ago. And it's not healthy for nobody. It just feels good and it's safe and yeah. secure, you know, but Ideal. yeah, it's ultimately, ultimately the big picture. It's just an enablement. It is um, babysitting, it's coddling, it's it's not really about development yeah. and growth. It's really not. It's really not. Wow, powerful stuff. Um, don't have HIV. 
Never. No. I mean, if you do have HIV, that's not a death right. sentence. You if just I, don't have HIV, and you get transferring it to nobody. I never had HIV, and let me say this too. I thought this the other day. I said, if I was fricking somebody, they would not be telling. Do you know how good, this thing got a gold tip on it? Do you know? <laughs> How silent they, they, they will be, so they can keep getting it. <laughs> I had that thought the other day, but uh, no, I have never had HIV before, and I, I do have people that I know who have HIV. Me it too. is not a, a death sentence, right. and I would stop using two things: HIV as like a read, or even being these people titles like commentary. I, everybody does it. Mm. I don't. I hate it. You know, and I don't like when it's put out like, oh, this person is suspected to be gay or same gender loving. Like, what is wrong with gay and what is wrong with HIV? Well, that's what I was trying to understand. It's like, so hypothetically, if me and Larry were in a situation, uh, he's a grown man and I'm a grown man and he's single and I'm single. And if it was a thing, what? Uh, uh, so what? OK, so what is what is that supposed to mean? You obsessed with us. That's all it is. It means that you just you just obsessed with us. That's all it means. You're obsessed with us and sexuality. Um, and these criminals, and I hate to say it like that. I mean, but they all got mud shots. Mud shot team. You said what? The mud shot team. Yeah, I mean, they all got mud shots and, and records. Larry does not. I'm the only one who doesn't out of LeVon Trey, Le, both of Lamores, including the lawyer. Um, I don't know if he got mud shots. I don't know if he got whole okay. case. I know he got a lot of taste. Oh, yeah, and Tasha K. You know, I, I ain't never lived that life. You know, there's some stuff I did. I just didn't get caught, you know, because I, <laughs> I have I have beat some people. And, you know, I've, I've jumped I've in a few things. You know, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> ah! you know, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, that I that's not me. And if it was me, and this is something my true LRL is known, I'm a very smart man. If I identified as gay, or or identified as as something whatever, or if I had HIV, I would use it to make more money moves. I'm not stupid, yeah. so I would. You use could be it. an advocate. You could be um, an ambassador for this. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, I, yeah, I know the right people. To take any one of those things and increase what I generate by a few million a year, I know how to do that. I mean, I I have taken my brand and rebirth it three times, you know. So I know how to do that. So I, you will never hear from somebody else something that you have not heard from my mouth. Mm. If you hear something from somebody else, you ain't heard from my mouth. They lying. It's just, it's just simple as that. But it goes, I'm gonna tell you what Drew did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So last but not least, people are curious to know. So you are going to refile against Levantre Andrews. Yes, unless I feel like, you know, I mean, because I didn't want to file in the beginning, but I had to. But um, that's my intention. I'm going to refile. And somebody told me the other day that the lawyer was on Wiley show, which I didn't watch. But it was on Wiley's show and said that he wants to pay somebody five hundred dollars to try to serve me. This is I feel like that's frivolous um, because I know there's a lot of properties in Atlanta and other places with my name on them. So it could be difficult, but it's not impossible. Um, there's no hiding for me. I travel. I'll be going tomorrow. You rip and run too much to be high. Uh, like you out here, you outside. You and then outside. I put it online. And then, and then I put it online. I'm always out, out, you know. So there's no hiding that is going on. And this is the thing that's so interesting and funny to me. If what I was told is the truth about the five hundred dollars he wanted mm-hmm. to pay somebody to serve me, I don't understand who is going to go through the loops. And the uh, jump over ditches and gates and whatever for five hundred dollars. That's funny. Number one, number number <laughs> number number two is this lawsuit that Lamore Whitehead and this I think the lawyer filed it. Mm. Of course, I'm 
white white head is in agreement with it. I and he's a lawyer. I know this and ain't no lawyer. You filed that in New York. New York has no jurisdiction over me at Durn all. Even if I'm served, the first thing I'm gonna do is watch y'all had Levantre do. <laughs> jurisdiction. <laughs> I'm gonna send my license, redact it, and send it to my lawyer in, in New York. And I'm gonna, and if that happens, the lawyer I use is gonna make all of the internet fall out. But uh, to send that to them, and they're gonna let the court know that I only live that my domicile is not in New York. I don't even have a, pl a place in New York, you know, to even play with residency because residency and dom and oh, so domicile. I guess that like he too would then end up representing himself. Yeah, you know. So I, I'm like, you know, y'all, y'all, I don't gotta be doing this for clicks and likes because you need to dismiss the case and file it right. You know, that's you just file it in the right place. At least we filed by mistake in the right because and that and if that is a mistake, and they and they stand in this because he sent the licenses. And listen, somebody else done a headline talking about Larry Reed dismisses, dismisses the case because he's guilty of something. Nigga, he asked for them to dismiss the case, and we were just like a yes. Yeah. He's looking at pace, it says they're asking for a dismissal because of um diversity. Meaning that saying that we actually live in the same state and not two yeah. different um, states, and so we just, we just became a yes. Now we could have stayed in it and then had the court to dismiss it. We don't want that to happen, right? You know, because that's probably going to be done with prejudice. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've done it without, so that then we can just file it. You know, in the right proper state. You know, so which at that time they may say where well, he done moved to Florida. I don't know what they're going to do. You know, but. <laughs> That's that's what the plan is to refile in Georgia. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And as it relates to Flopsha K, any future litigation with her, or does it take her publishing this interview that she's already done to? to it's to it it or? She already done committed defamation. Yeah. Uh, she said she touted that. Uh, if what I was told was right, mm -hmm. um, she touted about the twenty five thousand I raised on my platform about me not paying. That is just not true, and not true. Rece there receipts to prove it. What she said about me and you. Thank you, Tasha. One hundred percent. I hope there's something left after Cardi B is done with you. That's one hundred percent. And they said she said, and that ain't no alleged. I'm like, she said that ain't no allegedly. Oh. Okay. Okay. I would, love, I, I would love to see. I would love to see y'all factualize that in court. Exactly. That, uh, hotel receipt. I, I will give it my whole. My, my <laughs> you can take my American receipt. Yes. Pull up the flights. Pick, pull up me on the flight logs. Pull up. Yes. Because yes. 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 we're we gonna make you work for these lies, honey. Okay. <laughs> because that's two things. And oh no, there's another one that they was telling me that she said. Uh, if this is true, I don't know. I didn't hear in my ears. Um, said there was something else that she said that just totally was. Oh, and of course the molestation. That's total. That's 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 mm -hmm. another one. Um, and then there was something else they told me that she said. Now, mm. oh, right. but anyway, yeah, she, she it's everything. Like hell, everything come out her damn mouth is slanderous. I mean, just I mean, it's all bull crap. <laughs> The yeah. HIV, the HIV stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 that too. Yeah, yeah so it's, um. So it's are you, so does that mean there is a lawsuit coming or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I told her I told that on the phone and I told her that before I moved on that three-way call with the other vlogger and Armand. I told her that. I said, if you ever come out of your mouth, because the other vlogger who's now doing everything that she asked him to do, according to him, as far as my name, he said that she said all these things she's saying now. That was months ago, you know, and she denied it. You know, so, but the now. is saying, get her bald head ass, please. <laughs> Exclamation point. Now, what, let, me say, let me say something about that. 
let me say something about that. And Shamako and Kendall, y'all connected to me. And Latrice, be careful what you say in the chat, because then I have to pay for it. He ain't say ball head, but he said get a please. But see, Marco just angry. He likes to fight. He wants to be everybody else. Everybody yeah. thug yeah. on their team. Every him, Lisa, if Jim Lisa, had Peter, you can have Shamako. Him, Lisa, and Latrice have not done. Now they all suffered, and I don't. I don't. They, um, I'm. I'm pretty sure they're others. That they, they have not processed their anger. They're still mad. I think there's a place for that. I think that it is. It's not, it's not just for ass kicking energy, Larry. You need. Listen. You need some people who can hold on to that because you never know when you're going to need to employ as kicking energy. Let, let the other people have that energy. They are the other people. I know spirit. You and When you're doing a certain kind of spiritual work, because we're handling law, but I'm doing the spiritual work every morning. When if you, there has, you cannot have that. I guess you can. Yeah, because they're doing just fine. All the American, the way All I work, living good, living good, and got ass kicking energy in them. But well, the way I work, it has to be light and love, and I can't hold nothing in my heart to work properly. So holding it in their hands and feet, not in their heart. Now I'll tell you, Kim, um, um, Marco, Lisa, and Latrice have been abused. That don't you know this this story we're talking about with Lavandre? Mm -hmm. Latrice got a whole nother one with his wife. <laughs> That same identical thing. <coughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yes, I heard what you said about my soon-to-be wife. <laughs> I don't know why I gave me a love Latrice. And so and so then and then but she is beautiful. And she has a beautiful spirit, yeah, too. And Latrice is a bad ass bitch. <laughs> Latrice Spencer is a bad bitch. Period. So it's there's there's so listen. That's so much. And Lisa has, oh my God, the way that they did We her. saw Alisa hands oh, when she beat the hell out of y'all oldest daughter. Or y'all youngest one. Yeah, y'all oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yeah. You need that energy, Larry? Alisa can't protect y'all from intruders, burglars. Well, they can have it. They can have that. Yes, yeah. So, that, but, so but I, I understand that. You had like, like God ain't got... Raphael, Michael, and Gabrielle. I mean, even God got ass kickers. That nigga kicked now. Lucifer out of heaven. Even Jesus had Peter in him. Remember, Peter put down the sword. That's God. right, Scorpio Queen. Shamaka is hurt. And so, with men and men, oh, oh, Shamaka is a man, a testosterone filled man, here to protect, <laughs> here, here, here to protect the innocent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. says, we have done so much for these niggas. They lived in my house and I paid for shelter and so much and cried through the night and this hurts. No. And this is extreme. This is extreme. This is enough for I've anybody. Always, I've, always lived, I've, always, I've always lived by this. If somebody has done something for you, now something is an understatement when it comes to us for what we've done for these particular people, but you need to times it times 10 and 20 to see to get the big picture. You should never open up your mouth in this way. I'm not telling you not to say what's on your heart, but in this way, in this public way, you should never ever do this because you can't do this to the people who have helped you and think you're not going to have to pay for this. Pay for what? Pay for feeling like you want to whip somebody's ass? Oh, you missed what oh. I said. I'm saying, I'm saying, those that are doing this to us, because not just me. Oh. I have children. I think it already has, though. If you look at the fact that all these, all these, all these fellas, one is living with an STD that he wouldn't to blame on you, and still broken, busted, Levante. Levantre allegedly done been evicted out of every house. He's stuck in his mammy's crib uh, underneath a mountainside. And the other, the the other one who claimed he saw you doing weird stuff, being lost his damn mind and admitted that he been on, on all types of Prozac and, and alcoholism. I think what's happening to y'all is a byproduct of these people even dealing with karma and, and blaming y'all for the state of their life. 
Okay. People, these guys have to look at you, Larry. They have to look at Elisa. They have to look at Shamako. And they have to look at what you've created for the people that you've kept and including yourself. And they've got to think about where they are in relation to where you and all of them are. They are, this is misguided anger. They're mad that y'all have went on to glow up and to prosper and to create a lane for yourselves and to open up a legitimate legacy while they're in their mama's house under evictions, running from process service, still dealing with trauma from 1997, still didn't resolve those daddy and mommy fractures, still bitter and unhappy, still, still, I mean, the list piles up. This is the old adage from rack to riches and the disgruntled people who couldn't go with you. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of people mad at the successful people in their lives who they knew mm -hmm. once upon a time. Mm -mm -mm. There are plenty of those people. So y'all, I do not believe that if Levantre, Del Quan, and the other fool were also in their bag, if they were in their legacy. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that's true. You know, this would true. this would not even be a thing. That's true. If these people were selling high seas, this would not be a thing. This is only a thing because of where you at relative to where they all still at. Thank you coming out. Mm. Oh, that, well. oh, and guess what? If you would have never made it, this would not be happening either. <laughs> mm. I thought about that too. Mm -hmm. I thought about that. But you made it. And you cut some people off at the knees right before the quantum leap. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a rage in some of these people. Some people are enraged because they knew the life they always prayed for was tangible. And they believe you are the one that helped the key and you kept and you didn't open the door intently. And they are mad as hell about it. Mm. Cause you you sealed them from something that they believe God had for them too, and Levantre out of all of them always knew it, which is why he always praised you openly. Oh, I'm so proud to be a part of this empowerment. This man is a powerful spiritual leader. Oh my yeah. God, this man, this man, this man. I'm so blessed. I'm so the and in a way, I empathize with him. I, I sympathize. I sympathize. You know, and, that, and that's so very true. That's so very true. Cause he did. Cause see, during those times, I re I remember doing one of my accounts. They're, they're probably like sixty eight thousand dollars in it. And I remember he was sitting there right beside me at the house. He came over to my house, um, and at the time I was engaged, and to the other lady. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, "I've never seen this much money in my life. Oh my God, I can't believe that." that. He said, "You just gonna just." blow up you're gonna he, he used to always he always praised me even in private he did that's that is very true but you know this is what i thought the other day because of how i was wired and the people that was in my church know this if i had i've always been doing well because i've been obedient to god mm, amen. but now for better and i would have used everything i got now and i would have brought all of them up to a new level. I believe that some things happen so that we don't, you know, take certain people with us where they really do not belong. Yeah. And I know I would have done that. I know I, I was doing it back then. I know I would have done that. But you know what's so funny though? And maybe it's where they belong, but just like the Israelites, because they didn't do the work, you don't belong right now. And see, now that's where the introspection would get them caught up at. Is that this ain't about Larry. If God didn't allow me to access the promised land that he was making available through Larry, it's not Larry who can keep me from the promised land. I need to evaluate Come where on. my alignment is that this opportunity didn't see itself through. But like all human beings do, we like to blame somebody else before we ever take that long look in the mirror and search within ourselves and take that level of accountability. We just don't do that as people. Oh, you can't speak since you are here now in my face. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hey, who's that? Alisa? Yes. We oh, were talking about your lesbianism earlier, Lisa. Say what now? We were talking about your lesbianism earlier. I wasn't. It was <laughs> I am not a lesbian. Anymore. 
Any more, Lisa? What? <laughs> Any more? You're not a lesbian. I am. I'm not what a lesbian then. <laughs> We now know that being gay for pay, Lisa. You know that ain't right. Uh-uh. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't eat no puss. Oh, okay, good. I'm so you- glad. And she didn't have her puss ate. Now she played it a little bit, but she. she, had, she <laughs> but Lisa, you. Be, I'm still waiting for you to come on my platform and talk about how you got away with being with this woman without being with this woman because that's game. That's swag. That's player player stuff. That's player from the Himalayas. No, I just, it was not about all of that for me. Uh-huh. Y'all need to be on interview because you need to tell that. In <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, that's right. Buy my book. book, Good Grief. Is okay, coming. that's right. So, <laughs> how coming out? Same this club. About, about two months, her book came out. Then you interview about the book. She put all hey. that. Hey. It's my baby, Zaria. The baby. We were talking about Zara. Have you forgiven your mama Zara? No, that's the that's the adult. That's the oldest one. Oh, okay. So Zara, have you forgiven your mama for beating your youngest sister to hell? <laughs> yeah, we said that. Seriously, she ain't gonna say nothing about her parents. She mama. ain't, honey. She 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 had to look at you for approval, honey, before she even answered. <laughs> I ain't bad. I'm sorry. All right, conscious. Well, this was great. Um, anything else that you want to say before you leave to the situation? Um, you can. So I want to say this to you or, and to your supporters, yeah. to those of you that are in in the chat, mm-hmm. and I want you to, to, to hear what I'm saying. You're gonna come to a place in your life where you are going to be blamed for something that you didn't do Mm. and what's going to injure you deeper that's probably going to come from someone that was very close to you if it's as bad as mine has been over the last three years you may not even be able to say what you want to say in response to what they are doing and saying about you. But God is going to give you support. People that are going to be there for you and people who would advocate for you. Conscious TV is a platform that advocates not just for the truth, but advocate for what should be looked into, where the light should be shined, and where the conversation should really be. I want you to continually to support Conscious TV, not just because he has advocated for me and always have. Any them and stuff that I couldn't talk on, he pulled out of the Patreon and he talked about it. And he said some things that I couldn't say that any researcher should have been able to find. So what I want you guys to do, there are 492 of you in here. There's a time to sow a seed because the word of the Lord came forth. And then there's just times to just give. Mm. What I want, this is a time to just give because of what you have received in this conversation. And this is the, the only platform where I will come to talk like this. Or it would be the first one at least. There are a few others that I would, but this will be the first one and the primary one. So this platform is extremely important to me and this content creator is important to me because he has told truth. My guys and stuff are off and wrong, but ultimately, <laughs> ultimately he tell the truth even when he dragging me it's okay because i know that he is telling the story and he's telling both sides so what i want everybody to do it may not be a whole lot i'm not gonna tell you what to do but i well yes i am because this is december the 12th this 12 12 so the doubling and pattern of any number means that angels are at play 
Whenever you see the number 1111 or 111 or 222, there's an angel that's trying to communicate with you. So I want everybody to take just $12 and 12 cents and send it either through PayPal or Cash App and do it right now. And in the memo section, say something nice to him so that when he read it, it goes into his heart to where he can feel it. $12 and 12 cents. Now, if the prophecy showed up and there was a word of the Lord, I'd be asking you to so see to plan in that word, but that's not what happened. This is a conversation that was profitable and entertaining too and informative. So we're just going to give because we have received here on Conscious TV, $12 and 12 cents. 12 is the number of the apostles and prophets. 12 is the gubernatorial number. That means it's a it's a number that has the has the power to set order apostolically and prophetically. It's a number that speaks of 12 is a number of authority. And I believe that Conscious TV is an authority on YouTube. So let's give with the awareness and consciousness and the conviction that Conscious TV platform is an authority on the YouTube street. $12 and 12 cents. Oh, wait. Right now. Yeah. Jesus, well, y'all heard it from the pastor, man. You know, it's so funny you say that. Like, as soon as you kept saying authority, I thought about even how all synchronistically how my platform has been used, even accidentally, even around the same time last year, we were interceding on other YouTubers' behalf and attempting to reconcile, and somehow all that energy galvanized around me. Yep. Yeah, all of them came right here to this platform because all of them. it is an authority on YouTube and everybody knows it. Yeah. Even the haters who can't admit it, they know yeah. it. They did it. Everybody knows it. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. Um, we are rooting for you and praying for you. And we're happy that you are in good spirits and that you... You know, I have been able to sustain yourself under the last three years because it's been a lot. Uh, you are a testament to uh, true solidarity and just standing solid. And I know that prayer is a huge part of your life mm -hmm. and your relationship to God. I think that is so important that at your level, you have the level of relationship to spirit that you do i think oftentimes what a lot of leaders don't do is they material level up but they spiritual don't Ooh. why there ends up being a lot of avalanche effect but you are surviving this thing you're thriving you're not just surviving you are thriving mm -hmm. thing thriving that is a true testament to the fact that when god is for us who and what system can be against us so I really think you should continue to pray on that book about the dark side of leadership. I really think there is a niche there and I think it could be informative and super nuanced and speak to a side of leadership and ministry and public service that a lot of people go through, but there's not been a lot of conversation around. Um, yeah. I really, really almost feel a conviction around that for you. Like okay. that would I'm, I'm, be a bestseller. I'm listening to that, but I want everybody, and I received that, everybody, when you do the $12 and 12 cents as a gift, you're literally declaring Conscious TV is an authority. And when we're going to watch his voice raise up with less than 100,000 subscribers and somebody pick him up to sit him in another space that's way bigger than his to do what he do right here, to decipher to explain, to pontificate, and just expound upon things because Conscious TV is an authority. Con it even rhymes almost. Conscious TV is an authority. $12, 12 cents. When you, every time you send it, everyone that's coming in, I'm looking at you saying, done, done. Every time it comes in, it come in. It's a prophecy that Conscious TV mm. is an authority. I received that. I received it. I All right, I'll see you later. All right, thank you, love you.
All right, let me that think. was the doctor, you guys. Let me help get the doctor out of here. Oh, y'all know he old, child. Okay, he out of here, girl. That was... Uh, that is an exclusive, okay? <laughs> you guys got an exclusive. Um, I just want to briefly expound upon... I needed this message right now myself. Um, when you level up, you're going to go through the Judas experience. It's unfortunately a part of the growth. It's a part of the leveling up. All of our lives, especially those of us who have received Christ in our life, our lives are going to be an archetype of Christ's life. This is why Christ tells you in the scriptures, don't rebuke the cross, embrace it, and just look to me as you carry the burden of the cross. You're going to inherit the dynamics of Christ's life, the love the adoration, the social equity, but you're also going to take on the betrayal. You're going to take on the heartbreak as well. <sighs> I don't want to cry. But this is a timely message. It just is. And it's not an easy road. But if you can keep your eye on Christ, all will be well. So, trust in your season. Lean into your season. Don't resist the war. Don't fold either. Stand up in it. Stand up in it. And if you stand up in it, it will stand up in you. So that was a Larry exclusive. Um, I hope that part two was deeply informative. For those of you who've been asking Larry to jump out of the window. He jumped out of the window. <laughs> so you have his side. Now, what you make of his side is, of course, your truth to bear. And, um, but you officially have his side. And uh, this case will be refiled. And there will be litigation against Flop Shake. And uh, we have a part two to get into as well. I guess I'll be coming through and getting into part two. Because uh, we got one more piece of this to finish and uh that'll be that until that's that i want to i haven't checked my phone i'm almost scared too because I, I i know y'all probably flooded the paypal in the cash app so i'm gonna let everything just come through and thank you to all of you who donated your 12 dollars and 12 cents I will shout you all out tomorrow because I know folk going to catch us in a replay and going to be donating as well. So I'll just wait until everything comes through. Um, but we're living in very, very, very crazy times, you guys. And uh, these are not just things you're going to see people in public go through. You're going to go through a lot of the stuff in your own life. It's going to come right down into your own experience. Um, just please stay prayed up. And protect yourself, protect your heart, be discerning, be wise, be loving, but be wise and be discerning. And know the difference between those who looking for love and need that love and those that are swine. Um, but I love you guys and continue to pray for me and keep me in your prayer as well as Larry Reed, etc. So I'm going to get out of here. Thank you to my moderators who modded y'all assholes off tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of the LRLs and conscious crew members who held it down tonight. When y'all hear people doing all that yabba dabba doing, are they unclear? Just send them the link, baby. Just just send them the link. Get on over here and make it happen. Also, if you didn't thumbs up on your way in, please thumbs up on your way out. This helps with the growth of the live stream, etc. Helps to get into the algorithm. Helps to get the truth out there. 
uh, to get the information out there. So please thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.